Hola. Thais. Hola. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing good. <laughs> Welcome to my podcast. Uh, I don't really have a name. I, I called it El Camino because I was talking about my uh, way of St. James, of my Camino de Santiago. Camino. But maybe I go, I'm going to rename it because it's not the Camino anymore. Um, Thais, tell me about you. Who are you? Who am I? Okay. So is it safe to say right now you're more musician than runner or are you a runner who happens yes. to be a really good musician? Well identify myself as someone who enjoys playing music and being free does that make sense that's a correct answer <laughs> I'm kidding um, mm. so Thais is a an amazing musician I met a week ago more or less in Sevilla uh, traveling in Spain um, and l just like me you're living in a van so actually this is where we are right now in Tice's van there you go so it's a beautiful van um, we're, we're here in Donostia San Sebastian in the Basque country right now um, recording this this podcast um, there's an engine going when when did you start playing music when when did you start playing guitar guitar I started when I was 16 um, at first let's just go back I was seven and um, my parents kind of uh, supported it if we would take music lessons any instrument so we chose piano me and my brother it means we and uh, so we had lessons piano lessons for about four years um, but I never read the the sheets the, the, the partituras no? mm -hmm. I never read them because I, I I suffer from a form of dyslexia so I count them and I, I can't really do that so I was basically copy copying the movements of of my teachers hands you know so this is how I uh, did I did that for four years and um, um, yeah, only when I was, uh, then I didn't, I stopped it, I didn't like it, I, when I was 11, and then I was, I don't know, 15 or something, 14, 15, I started playing bass guitar, because uh, I thought it was cool, and it was easier than guitar, my brother started playing guitar, uh, but we kept on stealing each other's instruments, so I, <laughs> I, I found myself with the guitar in my lap, and he with the bass, <laughs> He's then, he then started studying conservatory, uh, pop, music mm -hmm. and uh, on the bass and um, yeah and I, and I I I studied sports in the end and I, I just I did music but I wasn't really I wasn't really serious that about that because I, I I don't know I, I really enjoyed it um, but only when I was about so I started guitar yeah when I was 16 um, but I started playing in, in bands a bit more serious when I was 18 okay. via my brother yeah who, who who did pop academy and I, I kind of uh, felt very well I looked up to these guys because they studied music and they were you know I mean the word conservatory right that's the word uh, conservatorium in Dutch and it sounds yes, like yes, yes. bloody expensive edu edu you know like well you must be smart because <laughs> it's you know so uh, yeah I found myself playing with them in the end because the guitarist was in a fight with the key player they kicked the guitarist out the band and my brother said like hey my little brother plays a big guitar and this is basically how i got involved with a bit more serious guitar playing 
but then um you were you you you, you had a career as a runner right you were a runner before you yeah. before you went like all in, in in music is that correct yes yes i i studied sports as i said and during this sports study it was very practical you know we did all the sports and uh, you know health and management also but uh we had to do a cooper test during um the d during the studies and then i ran close to four k's on 12 minutes without being trained with, with i did wave lifting more than i did running and so the teacher said hey you have a talent for running then i went to the, the local athletic club and I, i i i just fell in love with running and the trainer titus vegans his name is uh was such a motivating man he, and, and so nice that i i instantly thought this is what i want to do so i stopped my sport stopped my yeah stopped my studies in sports and i just started running and i could get um, a bit of money running races and trying to win them and that just went on and on and then um, after five years of, of of training then i i kind of or and running obviously racing after five years i managed to to win the nationals on cross country in a short distance and then uh, I, i won more races yeah Guitar, uh, basura, no? <laughs> <laughs> guitar in the trash. Yeah, during this time. The, yeah, and yes, for, for the first <laughs> four or five years, yes. It's funny. And then after after this, you kind of re, like, yeah, you took it out of the trash and and and, and started. Yeah. Again, playing guitar and and uh, I mean, um, your, your your technique is 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 amazing. It's it's crazy. Um, I saw I saw you in Sevilla playing in this in this jazz club, and I I thought th this guy is probably the the best guitarist I have seen in my life. I have seen life in my life. So and and I still think that. And I'm not only talking about the technique, but also just about the 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 vibe you 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 give and and how you seem like. I could see you and and you were in this in this zone in this Ray Charles zone you know like <laughs> <laughs> just in Best this thing. Yeah. and this this is actually the, the the kind of musicians I I I just love you know because you, you, your your technique is great but then on the other hand or, or with this you're just in this you're just living the music Thanks. So, chapeau. Nice word. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, what can I say? Um, I think we all play the way we are. And you need, obviously, get skilled in, in, in your movements and, you know, um, in, in, yeah, in your technique. You, you got to train, obviously, to, to, to say what, you, what your inner voice is encountering. I don't know how to put it. Mm. Um, but I... I I like to think that um, when I was competing in athletics and I had so much free time, uh, I was playing a computer game on the Xbox. It was called Mafia 2. And then in that computer game there is gypsy jazz music. Yes. And I really enjoyed that game actually just because of the vibe, the, the, the music and the uh, authentic 1920s, 1930s, I don't know. And uh, I thought, oh, I like this music. And then in the end, I started picking up my guitar. Uh, and there's this song, Minor Swing by Django Reinhardt. And I thought, oh, it's so nice. I want to learn that. And it was so difficult. I only, just the rhythm, the swing, it was already like bloody difficult. So I basically locked myself in my room whenever I wasn't running, eating or sleeping just studying this stuff and after half a year of, of devoting to this thing which is so difficult I kind of nailed it a, a, a bit and and so I, I like to think that there is this top sports approach in any profession if you want to become professional like you have to really kind of make your hours and train and do that and maybe I, I put a lot of effort in it without it feeling as if it was effort that I needed to put in simply because my way of life already was like you train every day you yes. die in a race you just put a lot of effort in it hmm. um, yeah 
<laughs> that that is what I can say about about technique. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. The other side of it is probably how would I say you play as how you feel and what you are and and I I I know exactly how it is not to be able to play music. And and I say this when people ask me I say this like when I was 25 I couldn't do anything what I do now. Nothing. You know, I, not even close. So and I was really like oh I would love to be able to do that so then when you are putting the effort in there and you kind of get the hang of it the fulfillment stays for a much longer time i think than when you can do this when you are a child you know when you're when you're 10 like Birey Lagrand or, or Jimmy Rosenberg or many other talents they could play like this when they were 10 probably better so to them it's just normal and i know exactly i was like not to be able to do that so I think there is this huge pleasure that I feel whenever I play also because man I can I can still remember when I w was not capable of doing any of that um, maybe that's part of the passion that people notice maybe or it, uh, I mean it, it, it it's just it's just great that you that you feel what you do that you f I think you you feel the music very yeah. simple but th that that's how i would uh, mm. how i see it and th this is just inspiring not only with music is with with any kind of art with with any profession if you feel what you do if you, if you want to do it and you, you you bloom in this thing that you do um that's just inspiring to other people because they see okay this this guy or this this woman is is in it like on it like <laughs> That's yeah. great. It's ins inspiring, man. Um, when did you start? When did you start van life? When did you start to live in a van and 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 uh, traveling around? In my mind, <laughs> <laughs> I started that very early already because I don't know. I already thought when I was doing my part-time jobs that that's I was doing it part-time basically because I needed money and it was not the thing I liked to do. Right, then running came into play and it was nice and I could get some money with running, more money with running, I could live from running. And then I just knew like if I keep my costs down, I can keep on doing what I love doing. Mm -hmm. So living in a van is, is basically a solution to wanting to be free and doing what I want to do. It's not because I want to live in a van, it's a bit like I want to put my time and money in something I love doing. And so having said that, living literally in my van i started that in 2014. Mm -hmm. i went to spain i was on holiday in spain with my best friend she's an artist carrie brown you should check out her artwork carrie brown and um, we were there together and i i was surrounded by some flamenco musicians and other musicians and there was another guy who was already living in his van and um it just triggered me like ah yes this is this is indeed you know i want to do that as well I already wanted that for a long time so then the climate had a massive effect in in how comfortable you can live in a van when you're at the Spanish coast <laughs> showers on the beach yes you know so um, then in 2014 when I, uh, 2013 I came back from a holiday then I told my trainer and my management I, I quit then in February 14 I went to Spain I fell in love instantly when I arrived and then uh, this whole idea plan kind of got interfered by the distraction of women and then <laughs> and so I, uh, I bought a van, refurbished this, I stayed at a house of one of my good friends Graham Eames, he's a guitar maker, at the same time he made this guitar for me, handmade guitar and I was staying in his house, you know, refurbishing my van after five weeks. I was finished and I lived in my van and then I had all these gigs in these chiringuitos the music bars on the beach yeah and then um, I, I, I had so much work that I could afford to basically use my money to rent a house because I already decided to stay in this place where I was because I fell in love with this woman so I rented a house where I also was partly living in so that I only lived in my van for a few months staying in the same place then hmm. in this house so that it, I, I didn't really live in my van but it felt 
a, a bit of the same thing. Basically, me being there, not speaking a word Spanish, <laughs> trying to find my way through. Okay, I, I need to play, otherwise I have no money. So uh, the freewheeling was happening already then. Um, so I don't think like van life, people might connect that to being free and having some kind of different responsibility about how you're gonna live your life in a free way. But that already felt like that early on. It's just the square meters that have changed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 I get that. Yeah, it's basically the. the it's not. You say it's not about the like van life, like this this trend also. But it's more about what how you how you live your life, right? Yeah. Traveling around, moving around. Um, um, and, and being free and, and, and doing what you love yes that's that's why I'm living in a van too I'm I don't I don't love living on five square meters like I I could use a few more you know mm -hmm. um, but it's just the best solution for the kind of life I, I'm trying to live or I want to live right now yeah and it's just very practical actually if you think about it because it's cheap and and you have your car and your house in one like a snail and your heater you have like this st stove what is it this uh, oh yeah i have a wood, wood stove, stove yeah. yeah 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 so oh, i uh, i have to cut wood and that's my my warm <laughs> that's classic. that's my my heating system actually yeah it's very cozy but it's it's not that comfortable in general like it's if if you when you start the fire it's very cozy but before you have to find wood some t usually there is wood but sometimes you, you don't have wood and then you you have to get wood yeah, 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 you know? yeah, so you yeah, can't yeah, store yeah. a lot because you don't have too much space so you, you, every t every day or every second day you have to get wood somewhere and you have to keep it in mind all the time and then I start the fire I go to bed at 11 12 wh whenever um, and the fire uh, yeah go, goes out and then I get up in the morning and it's pretty cold you know so it's it doesn't uh, I can't store the heat and so it's but it's it's a nice it's a nice addition yeah definitely it's no, it looks cool <laughs> 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 you know and when when the fire runs I mean definitely yeah uh, yeah it's it's very very cozy um, so your music how would you de describe your musical style you started you, you restarted let's say with with mafia 2 so with <laughs> gypsy jazz <laughs> did you stick with gypsy jazz is for a while yes I did I really was like that's it gypsy jazz I did not sing really I was just being instrumental you know? and uh, also because it's it's not one hand full it's like 15 hands full is how it feels you know you have to have like you want to have 25 fingers on both <laughs> hands but you don't so you have to like do everything you got to wow how the hell did Django Reinhardt do this with two fingers or three fingers right yeah. <laughs> I mean wow so um, that was already like consuming a lot of energy um, so then I was busking this, this is the thing so before I went to Spain I, I realized like being an athlete I want to play music again mm. and not being in the position to play in a band because if I would go play in a band it would have meant that I had a lot of weekends that I would have to play um, mess around with my biorhythm you know while I have to take care that I'm an athlete I have to run I have to you know prestige so I have to go to bed early not drink any alcohol not smoke any weed you know how musicians are like so I, I, I was like okay if I want to play I should play on the streets during the day or something you know on Monday Tuesday Wednesday because the races are on the weekend so I did that so you st you, st you basically started busking at that I time. started busking yeah and I bought a loop station uh -huh. and a little amplifier on batteries so then I could basically do the rhythm on the loop and after that is running I can do the solo parts and then you want money right so if you go on a winter's day in Holland when it's freezing or very cold you, you know and people don't really want to stand still listening to you you have to play for hours if you want to make a bit of money mm. and but I was like so motivated to play because I loved this I could do this and I was like oh I could do it every day all day long you know and that's what I then did on the streets I would play for six hours seven hours eight hours on the streets 
even if I only could play six songs, I would repeat these six songs for eight hours. I didn't get tired of myself in that time. Crazy. Now I would. <laughs> I was just like it a kid, like a kid with a dinky toy. Ah, play, play, <laughs> and then stop. Ah, six, well, six hours. Ah. Is a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. So then you, yeah, there was this gypsy jazz, gypsy jazz, gypsy jazz. Um, and of course, it's only later that you realize when you make so many hours and you repeat these motions so often that you 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 better become good at it because it would be silly and stupid and you would have not had any talent if you wouldn't become good at it because of all the hours, right? So I did that for half a year, just wake up, run, go pick a train, go to Utrecht or wherever, play on the streets, go back in the train to the electric track, train again, train, 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 <laughs> train again. <laughs> and then uh, food, uh, sleep. And I did that. And repeat. And repeat. <laughs> right. yeah, repeat. Yes. Yeah. That, that is so then that basically that's the gypsy jazz. Um, only later when I was starting to get gigs, I realized like, okay, look, people after three songs, they, they heard what you did, you know, what you yes. do. And uh, it wasn't good enough to call myself a gypsy jazz musician because I, I don't play jazz. This is not how I see it, you know. So then I started some songs, some singing, some songs, I mean. And, um, okay, a pop music, a oh, blues. I did blues because I was playing in this blues band and this funky music, so I, uh, I, I made compositions that I did this on my acoustic. And from there, it kind of grew. So the music styles I play uh, are, I don't th see myself as a musician that plays many styles. In sports, I would call myself a, a triathlon athlete because I can't run, I can't cycle, and I can't swim. But so yeah, you do it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I can't do any of that really, you know. But I don't want to insult any triathlete because they are amazing athletes with shit loads of motivation. I mean, wow, what a drive! But it's I feel like that, like this musician that just does everything a bit and doesn't control anything totally. Yeah. Well, I I would say you 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 pretty much do control it, like. You sell you sell yourself good. Then pretty I, short. I'm really good here, bluffer, but um, nice. I I can I, I can from what I can say from what I can tell I you you do fucking control it. Um, but I like I get this question too. What is your what is your genre? And so I I feel a bit shitty about like asking you because um, I I struggle a lot about like with with this question what is my genre it's it's hard to tell because you don't want to put yourself in just one um one box yeah. right and it's it's not yeah. possible because everyone has their their style of 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 making music of of, of um playing the guitar of singing of of feeling the the rhythm and everything so i, w I would this if i would describe your style it's a it's a it's based on on a lot of styles and it's and it's a it's kind of a fusion maybe like there's a there's a lot um it's not just one direction you go in in a few directions and then of course you add your own sauce to it and uh, and then that's that's your style right that's yeah. just yeah. what you do right well described yeah so um yeah definitely uh if you want to check it out what we what we're talking about ties is on every single platform where are you on, on on spotify on youtube on Instagram, on TikTok. Yeah, even TikTok. Even TikTok, wow. <laughs> still. <What happened? laughs> um, and you have uh, you have a, a website. We're gonna put the links all in the description. So if, if somebody wants to order um, a disc, a CD, you have f four albums out, yes. right? Yes. Which of uh, one you recorded here in this van? Yeah. Was it this van or? No, it was this van. Yeah. This van. So yeah. And uh, I have the CDs, and they are all amazing. My my favorite is the one that he that he recorded in the van, of course, because I like I have the same idea of recording something. In yeah, the van. because we are recording in the van. True. <laughs> <laughs> True. So so yeah, that there's there's that. Just really check out his music. Check out his his live videos on YouTube because it's um really inspiring. There's there's gonna come more the the next years i'm sure about it Absolutely. and i'm also sure about uh, that we are gonna cross paths a few a few times in the future and we're gonna record more than one podcast i'm i'm 100 sure of that oh, that would be nice it would be great yes 
Surf life. <laughs> Surf the podcast. <laughs> Surf the wave, right? Um, what? What is music for you? What does music? Which role does music play in your life? Can, big question <laughs> yeah well I'm, I'm thinking now that these are not just my words or my experiences but I hear other musicians and other people say like when you do something like playing music all your attention is in that in music right and even more so if it's like if your mo motoric skills are, are, are challenged you know, like your feet this on the tap and your hand this and you have to sing. So your brain is just occupied fully with doing this thing. So um, uh, I don't think when I play music. No, same with sports. When, you when you're in a race running, you don't think. You, that's just this. You, do, you go for that. It's like in a zone. You're in a zone. So I, I think that one of the main reasons might be that I like to escape... <laughs> life through that at the same I highly enjoy it I highly enjoy it but I do think that, um, how limited it might sound I still run a lot if I can't run or focus my energies on one particular thing and become OCD about it I don't know what I would do <laughs> <laughs> so I think that Music um, is an answer to op obsessive compulsive uh, disordered people, and uh, the other thing is, of course, it brings you. You know, I'm I'm more conscious about it now than I was in the past because I was just busy with making music. I didn't pay attention to what it would what would come forward when you do it. Right now, I'm like, okay. For example, I live in my van alone. I'm in a place where I don't know people. I know that if I go and busk, I will create social connections. People will come, hey, who are you, what you're doing, you know. You meet people, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you become uh, literally a people's amuser, especially for kids. Kids on gypsy jazz, it's like, <laughs> that it's, that's what I would want to do. But So I, I get envy when I see these kids because they just go. They um, just do it, right? They, they just, yeah. they just um, are. Yeah. They don't. They don't ask all these questions that we adults ask. Like, can I do this? Should I do this? Am I allowed to do this? What should I do? They just do what they feel. They dance. They 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 yeah, play. That's amazing. They play basically, right? And yeah, I get these, these these interactions with these kids, and the parents. They sometimes the parents don't even get it, and I'm just like, I get it. I get. You know, I don't know how to put it. I don't know. So I so I do I do feel now. I do have the sensation that with this music. I can be maybe a, like a, a tool, like a, what's the word? Um, um, ca catalysator? Ca no, catalyst between, no, that's not the word, is it? Um, uh, that, that you, like a medium? Yeah, maybe? there's something that you, you, there is more to life than just getting lost in, in daily activities and being so hypnotized by it that you, you forget to just stand still and, and just, you know, focus on the smell you, the odor you smell or or the colors and you know and the music has this thing like you play music and then and then you introduce to people in a way like hey stop what you're doing and listen to this and and whenever people are doing that you 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 kind of can affect them and this happens with children a lot a lot so i i, I now i'm more aware of what i can do to people and to environments and i highly enjoy that and more now when, when I'm I'm through this ego trip I feel I'm through this ego trip look what I can do give me attention for my talent give me the big stage give me attention from all the pretty women yeah it's all nice you know it's, but there comes this point that you've done it and ticked it and there's more to to this thing called life yeah <laughs> you know and, and then so there's a whole thing around how I experience music because it's not just the song, you know. Um, it, it's really nice when you can make people happy. 
especially when with something that you love doing it's very simple that's that's well put yeah, yeah. that's that's my my opinion too you you the best thing you can do in life is do what you love um and and uh while doing it affect people in a positive way this is in my opinion basically what what life is about find find what you love and there's this saying right find what you love and let it kill you is it bukowski <laughs> I, like I don't know one. find what you love and let it kill you babe babe <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> Sweetie, uh, here's the knife. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that's very very inspiring, man. And I think um, I think daily life can kind of kind of suck up all these attempts of finding your um, your thing, your what like what what fulfills you and what you are good at. And you you can you can lose yourself in daily life in paying bills in in in, in earning money in in family matters whatever there is you know um, and f kind of forget what you actually what you actually want what your heart desires yeah. and I think this happens to a lot of people that when they are children they have their dreams. And they have their big that they they know like children usually know pretty well what they need, what they're good at, and what what they what they want to do. But then later life hits you in the face, and then it's like okay, I I have to do this, I have to go study this, I have to do this. Um, and then I I think it it can be a problem if you're if if it doesn't fulfill you, and then by doing something else. There is not enough room for what actually would fulfill you, That's a good one. and so do what do what you love, people. Be children. <laughs> Be children. Yeah, yeah. But I I didn't need a lot of courage, I have to say, to to make that step. I mean, the first day I went busking, dude, was I nervous? You know, and <laughs> I, like wow, you go out. You know, you're, you're there walking in the city center with your gear and then you put it down in this plaza, you know, in this, and, and then and the people are observing you like, what's, what's this guy's gonna play music? You know, nobody asks you to play. So it feels like you're doing something that, um, you're not being asked to do this. So you gotta be bloody secure, feel very comfortable about what you do in order for the nervous energy not to kind of have some control over you. And so I, I realized that the first day I was busking, first like, ah, let's go busking. And I'm, I'm getting to this place where I want to install myself. And I felt like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and then you start playing the music. And uh, yeah, well, it was, I needed a lot of courage to do that. Yeah, the the, the, the beginning, the start oh, is, man, yeah. is hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was. For me, it was. Definitely was. Yes, for so, me too. For me so too. I, 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 I'm really glad I did that. So a lot of this, I think, change what you love doing. It's just, it's not just like an easy thing, you know, sometimes it can be really bloody difficult because you have to close other doors to open the, that door that your inner voice tells you to open, you know, yes. and, and I mean, do what you love doesn't mean it's going to be easy, no. right? True. There, there, are, there are always people who say, yeah, I, I know, I know, but it's not easy. It's hard. And I, I always think, yeah, nobody said life would be easy maybe life is not supposed to be easy maybe it's not about being easy maybe it's about doing what you love and even if it's hard maybe maybe because it's hard i don't know yeah those are the challenges that then enter your life exactly it's so totally different than before because you made that switch like i'm gonna go there you and get and you go out of your comfort zone you go out of your your room playing mafia too and you go <laughs> to the you go to the street and play for people and you don't know how they will yeah. how they will um take it you don't know if they're gonna yeah. like give you money or if they want if they are gonna like it in the beginning you know yeah. and then you make your experiences and then you see okay this works this doesn't work and and all that but the the beginning is very hard and i think it gets harder with age so if you try to change something big in your life 
it's easier when you're young because you're still c kind of unexperienced and innocent and you, you can make big changes of your profession or your your whatever it is you want to change and it's I think it's harder when you get older because you, you you're you're stuck maybe a little bit in 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 the kind of life you you uh, created for yourself mm. and it gets harder and harder the more the more stuck you get never impossible but harder for sure in a way i do think that w if you can make yourself like more your own master that you will realize that you've lived so many lives in in a year it really feels like that because you you find yourself you know now we're doing a podcast you know <laughs> a week ago i didn't know you existed you know and 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 there is in this week I can tell you many things that that have happened through that which m I think many people would think like w wow that that is I don't know there's a lot going on yeah there's a lot going on this yeah, is yeah, thing. definitely and um uh that that is a little bit of a struggle that I feel by living in my van that um the interactions I have with 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 the people with many people I meet um how to put this um, part of me gets a little bit sad to realize that that most people don't are maybe literally not in a position to be able to, to live free mm. uh, or, or they don't choose to because they don't want to or something so and, and a lot of the time I do feel a lone wolf and um, yeah I, I do I do struggle with that so now and then absolutely I think that's just part of 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 this of this lifestyle because um it's a it's a kind of a lifestyle that not everybody has so whatever your life is whatever you do if it's something that f that not everybody does or not not the majority of people does you're going to be a minority you're going to like for example there is a van life community you know there are people living in the van but um, compared with all people that's like a very yeah. tiny minority very and tiny, also yeah. not everybody living in a van just because living in a van is um is a is a nice or, or a person you you want to be involved with uh, you know the, 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 also there there are vibes who 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 there are people who get together and, and it works and like people who get together and it doesn't work so i i i, I get this but i i think it's just um it comes with it, right? It it comes with the decision of the freedom because in the end, with the freedom, there's also um, maybe some kind of loneliness because because you also free yourself from you can free yourself from people or from social constructions that other people are in. And so if if there is a there is a person who is in this construction and you're out. Um, yeah, it, it just, uh, it, yeah, it's just—it's a bit harder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, just uh, geographically, um, you meet people and then you move on, and then you don't see them again. It's not—it's not like you live in one house, and if you meet your neighbor and you—you you, you like him, then you can see him every day. You can have a beer every day or a mm. coffee. But if you live in a van, right now we're—we're we're basically neighbors because my van is, is right there, your van is here. Um, but uh, this this night I'm I'm leaving, so we're not gonna be neighbors again. And who knows when we're gonna meet again? Mm -hmm. You know. And uh, maybe I th there's there's something very beautiful about this because it teaches you to let go of the of the locations you are and of the people you meet. Um, there's a down, there's a like a like a dark side of it too that ca it can affect you in a negative way that you 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 always like run from something and you never, you know there there's a like a, a negative thing to it too. It depends on how you, on what you do and how you how you see it, I think. But I really like it because the the connections I have with with people that I meet on the on the way on the on the on the road. Um, it's it's just very interesting because it's you can meet somebody and in one or two days you're already talking about mm. look we 
I, I met you a week ago and now we're talking about the the, the the craziest stuff you yeah. know and it's pretty intense isn't it it's, pretty it's, it's intense it's a it's yeah. an intense lifestyle and you meet a lot of people and and um and you make a lot of experiences living in a van and, and, and traveling not only living in a van also just traveling like if you're open and and and, and you you're out there and also especially if you're making music Mm. So you have it all. You're, you're a musician. You're living in a van, and you're traveling. And I'm single. <laughs> and you're single, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I, sometimes I have the feeling that that um, y living this kind of life, and I don't mean only living in a van, or I, I mean like the more the mindset. You, you can live the same life living in one city, I think, but it's it's more like the mindset of the of going out and and meeting people and and all this and like just this intense mm -hmm. lifestyle. And if you choose to do to live it that intense, then um, then that means it, it, it just you live in one week what what usually other people may may live in in a few months or maybe in half a year or one year, and so it's so compressed um, and intense that it yeah it it can be pretty intense, <laughs> and that's not always easy. It's not always easy, mm. and you have you have to you have to want it, you ha and you have to be able to to manage it. Th this intensity, because there there are so many feelings and and, and 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 deep deep thoughts and deep deep stuff that you, that is there, right? So yeah, I like it. By the way, I like the intensity of life. I uh, you do, yeah. That I, I, f I find it very very amazing actually um, but it's also hard well they say right love with all your heart cry with all your tears and that this is exactly yeah. that it's like very because otherwise, dynamics, otherwise, so. yeah, otherwise you just get bored and, and maybe even I mean how how easy is it to get in a downer when it rains and you are on a few square meters right yes and alone also. and alone I mean you know you have to get out there and then you do bump into uh, yeah Mm. Life on yeah. steroids, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that expression. Yeah, life on steroids. Life on steroids. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, it is like that. Yes, but yeah, no. But to be honest, I am kind of uh, what I said, keeping it in a way calm now. To mm. do, yeah, literally not to do with women and all that. Just like, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. let me, you know, let me keep my monkey here. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. You know, also, I I get totally like um, this kind of um, you. Like in my experience, you get tired of of traveling around. Like it's, um, I'm I'm traveling now since September more or less. So it's what six, five five months. Yeah, you something need like breaks. That. You need breaks. With, yeah. with a little break of three weeks in my in my hometown, but the rest I'm I'm traveling. I'm meeting people. I'm on on the road, you know, and I'm I'm getting kind of like tired and I, I don't want to travel anymore right now I'm like I know there are people who travel full time and, and I respect that I, I I find it amazing I'm just not that kind of person mm -hmm. I like to to get home again and and, and also I need to work yeah. um, also I like to 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 get back to my family and to my friends in, in Germany you know and and all that um, it's just um, maybe it's it's very it depends a lot on on the person. Some persons can travel all day, all all year, and it's great and they need it. And some people don't want to travel at all, maybe. Um, and some people like like I consider myself or like a, like a mix of these two. Like I want to travel, but I I also don't have to travel like the world. You know, I don't have the ambition of of traveling all the countries of the world or, or like like as uh, as much as as many countries a, as i can i don't care i can come back to spain the rest of my life and only travel to spain and there are so many corners in this country that i don't know mm -hmm. and and in the culture and 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 in the the food and the people and the language i can come here to spain the rest of my life only to this country travel around and I'm gonna, and and be able to live this kind of intense life. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be like you know, uh, the the big world tour. It can be like I, I'm not I'm not saying you shouldn't travel the world. Do it if if you want to. Just um, me personally, I 
I don't have this ambition. Mm -hmm. And then there are other people who, who don't have the ambition that I have to, to travel at all, you know? And I think um, that's that's cool too. Like, uh, listen, listen to your heart. Listen to yourself. What do you need? Don't travel because people say you should travel. Mm -hmm. Don't do anything because somebody tells you to do it. Mm -hmm. Do it because you feel that you want it or, or that you need it better. And do, do this and try things. Try things. If you don't know what you want, just try. Just try this. Try this. Try that. And eventually you're going to find something. Like you find you, you found music and, and I found music too. You know, and, and we found this this thing that we that we feel comfortable with and that we can do you say bloom or blossom i don't know my english is, is both <laughs> I'm, a, i'm a dutch ich bin von den niederlanden <laughs> just find that thing right and if you didn't find it and if you can't find it keep searching doesn't matter And enjoy the ride. <laughs> I think that's that's a key point, right? We we talked about that uh, yesterday. I think, yeah. Um, yeah. Enjoy the ride. It's that's so it. important. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yes. And enjoy the enjoy the the present moment, right? I learned a lot from you about about all this. Um, can I call it philosophy or like the the per, the perspective or perception of? of living the present moment just what Eckhart Tolle uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, talks about in his in his book uh, the power of now and i think you you're really um trying to do it or, or you're really doing it and and you really believe in in this in this thing. yeah but there was something that happens right like once you become aware about all the dualities You know, because if you if you if you you know have experienced me, if if you observe me, you probably see a uh, lot of dualities, right? And 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 there's something there that be that you, when you become aware, that when you are being contradictory, or, or you know, I think it's more about what you say, more about how to handle those moments. Right? Yeah, like yeah, enjoy the ride, but I do believe that. Um, To stick, stick with your inner voice. You know, stick, just stick with your inner voice. And if you if you catch yourself being contradictive, contradictive or in a duality, just simply that observation itself would already make you realize that next time you probably might pay attention and not repeat the same thing. You know, and if you and and yeah, that that voyage now van life that thing it's very challenging on that level. So yes. I, so I see music. Yeah, I love playing music and all that. But um, yeah, I, I would like to uh, yeah be more in a present moment in a way, like you know. I from my observation, like when I observe you playing music, that's that's the there there are some moments where you just it's 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 very funny. You have your eyes closed and you're you're basically you're smiling and you make these 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 faces you know mm. and you're just playing and you're just in the in the zone in the flow mm. as as we uh, called it and i think in this moment you're a hundred percent in the present moment because you uh, like uh, tell me if i'm wrong but i guess you're not thinking about taxes in this moment or you, you're not thinking about uh, gas prices in this. But it's not you doing it this is how i can put it mm. it's not really me doing this This is how okay, a lot of the time it is because I'm not but when I'm really going with it, I'm always like observing myself doing this and and, and it's just happening. It, it's happening yeah. to you really and and so yes. the moment you want it for yourself, you, your fingers start to get rusty again. So it's this game between like not getting your personal want involved with with the music and um, Yeah, and, and the other thing is that I, I, I have observed myself quite a few times doing things that I was like, holy shit, how do I do that? I have no <laughs> idea. My fingers are going and I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, and I get like so enthusiastic because for me, I'm I'm not identifying me like, look what I can do. I, I did that. But when 
I'm happily playing. Mm. I I, so, I sometimes see these people. Wow, look at this! And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. And uh, this is the only way I can put it. Yeah. You know? uh, I don't yeah. know. There's some magic about life, and yeah, it's that's it's a good nice word when for you it. can, it's, can. There's there's a magic ab- yeah. about it that you. But it's just music. It, it's in everything. It is. It's. So it's uh, everywhere in the Ultimately, life. you know, nice music and all that, but it's it's not relevant so relevant, is it? Um, well, I, I would say it is relevant because it's it's just one tool to get there. But it's not the only tool. You can you can get there by just sitting and drinking tea. Right? It's just yeah. um I think this like from my point of view, this is what I'm talking about when I say find your Find your thing, your your passion, yeah, 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 yeah. if you will. Just f- find this thing, and if it's uh, uh, just sitting there and drinking tea, and if you can enter this this bliss, I I love the word bliss because mm. this is actually it's it's kind of like this zone or the fl- the flow, like bliss, and you just are. You don't think about how do I take this cup and mm. drink the tea. You just do it and you enjoy it, and it's hard to get there especially in our society where we are quite yeah, I, far away from it that i think the difficulty is um, to 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 you mastering every single moment your experience and so when you meditate and there's just this little thing that you keep being present with so then you you stop you you, you do your daily activities but you constantly kind of be staying the observer of whatever it is you're doing and not identifying yourself with it so when you say music i play music it sounds like a meditation or whatever after i play finish the song there's the audience you know or there's nothing you know and after finishing the song i that 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 is when the difficulty lies Oh, yes. Especially when people put you on a pedestal, like, "Hey, you're the artist. You are wow. Uh, you know, like, I want to get to know you." Or you, you know, when people start saying you're fantastic, you know, uh, who doesn't like to you're hear these things, right? Y- your ego blows itself up like well, a balloon. Only if you decide to identify what other people want you to identify with, which and but which is very easy to do in this moment. Yeah, but, the, but other people want you are almost asking you to. To, to do it to accept the or fact that you're special or something go with yes. our world go with our vibration I don't know I really want to talk yeah, with yeah, you yeah. and so I find it difficult after I've played especially in, in, in a bigger thing and there's more audience to kind of maintain a certain silence after I've spoken because yeah I find it a lot actually I want to be left alone after I played <laughs> I think the first um, first day we talked which was just the the day after your concert we talked about this, and you, and you actually told me about it. Like I, that you, um, that you like, that you play the concert, and then all the people come to you and, and want to talk to you, right? And want to want to say, ah, oh, you play so amazing. Yeah. And and I think you told me that you, what you do is you just listen to them, but you don't like actually. You would like to just. But many people want literally to put you in a so somehow superior position, which is yes. crazy. Even if you don't want it. Because yes. many, the primitive mind, the ego might really want that. Yeah, I'm special. I'm unique. Please look at me like that. But but um, once you've realized it doesn't work, then then the next stage is other people will tell you this, and then you have to kind of fuck. No, <laughs> I don't want that. Don't get no, no you know. And they mm. might say to please you because they want to please you, but you don't want to be pleased mm. because you don't want to be distracted from the purity of of just being. And that that's yes. the thing, you know. Like as an artist, I do struggle with that more after gigs and all that so it might yeah. be mo- way more of a spiritual journey than 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 i might be aware of or something i don't know you know mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's just it's it's very funny because because um many things that you talk about i i understand them because i i experienced them too but not not in the in the same extent, I I mm. guess, because you just played way more gigs and way more hours and and, and you know in your life. Yeah. So yeah. you just um, I felt this some sometimes, you know, but not to an extent where I'm really 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 tired of it. But I I get it. 
I get it. And I, I guess if when I'm when I'm playing more this this uh, summer, I'm gonna have a few uh, like a lot of concerts actually. So let's see how I how I how I feel about it after the summer. And I think I'm gonna remember a, a lot of your words nice. and say, oh fuck yeah, yeah, that's that's what Thais <laughs> was talking about. And now yeah, I, yeah. I actually really yeah I feel the same. Yeah. That's funny, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give me truth. That's it. I'm looking around in your van, and there's a there's this didgeridoo, right? Yeah. Didgeridoo. You have a guitar lele, which is a tiny guitar. You have uh, your guitar and your bass with you. Do you have another guitar with you? Yeah, yeah I have more with me. Um, yes, but I, I prefer not to mention uh, what <laughs> I have with me just for <laughs> security reasons. Oh yes. So yeah, no, I have more guitars with me. Yeah, it's uh, full of guitars. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it actually is. Yeah, it's well, there you go. That's it. No, okay. Now I've spoken about it anyway. I have a Gretsch with me, uh, jazz bass. We can beep. We can beep it later. <laughs> <Come here. laughs> yeah. You could have said just like an electrical guitar. Yeah, that doesn't matter. I already gave the game away. Yeah. Full. Uh, no, I have no values in my van. Nah. No, no it either. actually is not not that valuable. It's just. Emotionally, I'm connected to it. Uh, mm. Full kilowatt, uh, uh, full range kilowatt, one kilowatt system. Lights. You have lights. Yeah, I actually did a few <laughs> rave parties. <laughs> yeah, and the, the van is <laughs> the the energy source, and we just put every. I actually mic'd out a full drums and bass and everything on the on the on the beats. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was. It was that I sounds was, amazing. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, yeah. Next time, invite me. Yes. <laughs> we did a few raves. We put it on. We put it on Facebook and make it uh, like public. <laughs> yeah. We have one of these of these huge parties. Yeah, yeah. Just Maybe like, not. But also, when <laughs> sometimes the busking just gets out of hand, so you busk and during the sunset somewhere on the beach, and there is this food truck, and they have their own electricity mm. line, right? And and then more people come, and I had the situation that a hundred people came. And then I'm just with this little gear, you know. Uh, more people come, and the sun goes down, and and, and the the food truck owner is so happy because he's thinking business, business, business. Can you continue? And I'm like, yeah, I make a deal with this man. Mm. And then uh, more sound. Yes, you can use my electricity. So I go, I go get a bigger speaker, lights, and then boom, a big party on the beach. Right? Yeah, yes, <laughs> I had a few of these. Sounds fun. No man, I love these. Um, uh, what is the Sp word? Spontaneous. Yeah, yeah informal kind of things like like pop-up events like yeah i think the nicest moments i had was literally mm, improvised yeah 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 also also what we did yesterday you know with the, yes, with the bass yes, guitar yes. and then and then yes. i was like ah! because to explain <laughs> yesterday um tice was basking um and i i went there and i i i listened to him a little bit and then and, and then i went to the ocean to have a swim and you were basking 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 um and then later we had, or Thais had the idea, let's just, let's busk together a little bit. And so you got the other amp and, uh, and yeah, you played bass and later you played guitar and I, I sang, I played a little bit guitar and um, it, it was great fun and people saw that we were having so much fun. It's a different way of, of being creative and, and people like, I also noticed this, people like it to observe two people trying to find their way through right, harmony. Because it's not something you, you don't paint a song and then there is the, the the painting you know but what you do is you write a song and then there is this song but where where is it where is it actually you actually the real like actually it's a different song every time you play it and then when you record it it's just a recorded version it's it's kind of a copy of the song it's not it's never the original because the original is the is the thing you 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 play every mm, single time no so it's, and every single time it's a different version like you can play the song the same song every day and every day is going to be in a in a way a different song and um you can't really i, I mean people know this because if you go to a concert like you can't explain to other people what happened in a good concert you can't explain it it's just they always you say it was awesome or was shit. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and yeah. if I listen to people saying, "Oh yeah, I went to a concert and it was amazing," I say, so "Sounds good, you know." But mm. I don't, I don't get it. I don't feel it. But if you're there, you feel this, and that, oh, that's this moment where whatever happens, you know, something, and there's just, he he goes like stage diving or whatever, and he say, "Wow," and you get goosebumps. Or this is why I'm I'm thinking that that music is a 
is a very funny and interesting art form because um because how, how is the expression for it it's like uh temporary can you can you say this yeah like it's gonna because yeah, why not? if you have yeah, a painting you can look at it um hours or minutes or or days you can you can choose how much you want to look at it and there's this painting it has like th this is the the, the the square and that th this is the end of the painting you know the and power the, of now that's it mm, how is music the art form of music yeah and then it's music, now it's just <laughs> the, you play a note and and it's gone already yeah. so it's just it's just happening it's in journey. the moment it's a journey isn't it Th so this song yeah exists only in the moment yeah. while while another piece of art maybe like uh, architecture or whatever is is something that you create of course there's the process of creating it this is kind of the process of, of writing the song right this is the process and then you have the final house or the final im or the final photo or the final whatever but then it's there then it's there you can look at it you can you can see it yeah, yeah. <laughs> music is music is very funny and it's so emotional yeah. like music is so connected to to our emotions we have this song that we that we listen to during the breakup and then we ha and we connect to it uh, the, the, the the situation we were in and we listen to it again after 10 years and we the eyes fill up with tears and we say oh, I think back you know just very funny very very funny very interesting music so um let's talk a little bit about van life because that's it's basically something that we we both do um you longer than me um especially in your head mm -hmm. <laughs> well yeah <laughs> maybe all your life um I don't know, man. <laughs> van life. Van yeah. life. Just van life. That's just the word, isn't it? It's just, the, yeah, it's just, it's just, there's, there's, I, I really believe that it's nowadays, especially now uh, and after the COVID or during the COVID, and it becomes like almost like popular. Or, yeah, or yeah like, of course. It's a trend. Yeah, so many people also want to identify themselves. Like, true. I live in a van and therefore I am this or this type of person. True, true. And, and, and I, I think that there is a huge difference in what I say. Uh, n wanting to live in a certain way, therefore needing a van, mm. or wanting to live in a van because you try to be or, s or you have an image, thought about how it... Because you know. want to be part of the van life I don't know, I and mean, call it yeah, hashtag yeah. van life instead of, you know. Yes, yes okay, I, okay. Because I did meet this, these places where other people in their vans, they meet. Mm. And, um, you yeah, know, there are nice places, and I have a lot of friends, actually, that mm -hmm. live in the vans, and but they gather at certain points, like, um, um, yeah, I won't call names, yeah. I won't, because no. it's not totally legal or something, but there are these places where people get together, mm. and... Um, I'm talking between t 10 and 50 vans mm. and it's almost like as if they, they, they form like little villages. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 and yeah. they go from one village to the other village, you know, and, and yes, it is nice to live temporary in a place. Mm. But uh, for me, I, 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 I I don't live in a van to find other people in a van and to create this village. It's, look, it's so it's so so unbelievably funny that you that you mentioned this because I am almost annoyed by by this van life community hierarchy stuff van and, life and, and, and the, like <laughs> like I I I, I, I converted my van right I converted it I put everything it was a, it was empty completely and I put everything in it and and it's a it's a it's a lot of work it's really <coughs> a lot of work it's fun too but it's a lot of work yeah. and um and then now I see all these videos on Instagram why they're converting their vans and it's all it's all crazy it's amazing look they look like IKEA vans like like you, you bought them from IKEA you know everything is is white and, and nice and great and, and beautiful you know and and useful also they, they they do amazing stuff and I'm so annoyed by it already because I don't want to have anything to do with it anymore because I come from the same position I want I started this van thing because I just I thought but as actually I I started it because 
<clears throat> I wanted to move to Berlin with a friend, uh, with my with my friend Chan, and, and we were in a band at the time, and we wanted to move to Berlin because, of course, Berlin is is the big city for the for the musicians, and you know, and so we thought about renting a place there, a, a flat, and before that we lived together in in Wiesbaden in a, in another Wiesbaden, uh, another country. you know that, yeah. in another city, um, and actually. I thought about it and I said, no, I, I really, I don't want to pay three, four, five hundred bucks a month just to live somewhere and, and throw the money out the window. I don't, I don't want this because ah, oh, that's, that's not what I want. Also, it's just one place and I want to travel. And so I thought, okay, what can I do? I can live in a, in a, in a, in a camper or something, or in a, like, can I put a tiny house somewhere? You know, so I, I, I figured out. And in the end I said, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to buy a van. And uh, and just um, transform it because that's the cheapest way and, and the easiest way well, the easiest not but the cheapest um, and so I did it to to travel with it you know and in in the beginning I I I, I converted it three weeks and I wasn't re I wasn't finished at all like there there was so much missing still I didn't have a kitchen I didn't have like the the, the gas you know I I didn't have anything I didn't have a heating system until. Uh, until a few months ago so I but I, I started traveling after three three weeks because I wanted to travel I started traveling and then on the way I did something then I came back home I did I, I, I added something more and um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I'm kind of annoyed by all these all these conversion videos and stuff like that and and a few weeks ago I was in on the Spanish coast in Motril uh, close to Granada and that's a big hotspot for for campers like many many camping sites but also just people who who stay there with their camper right and all from from the netherlands from germany a lot from germany from france uh, some from spain and um some some british and uh i don't really feel um i don't really feel very comfortable around these these yeah. the, these kind of travelers i me personally i just prefer going to a little little tiny village in spain um and being the only one who lives like that you know or i don't care if there are more but like i'm not a big fan of these of these um of these reunions and it's all about the van life like i care about the people you know i like you not because you're living in a van i like you because i like you as a person mm -hmm. i like your music i like you know okay of course it's it's funny that we both live in a van it's something that that unites us maybe a, a little bit but it's not the reason why i mm -hmm. why i like you or why i want to do a podcast with you mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and i think in these um i uh, can i interrupt because i i think i think some some people that decide to live in a van um they maybe not realize how much free time you have and how you what you can do in all that time that you are free and if you for example I met a lot of surfers in Portugal well they live in a van because they want to go from spot to spot to surf so to to me th that would be a classical fantastic reason to live in a van because mm -hmm. you have your surf what you want to go you don't know when there's going to be waves you don't know where you want to travel your, your life is surfing because all the surfers that I met got addicted to it you know that that's Maybe if you want to classify it, it's one type of people that that live in vans approaching their dream. Mm. And 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 I, I maybe I'm a bit the same. I, I am have a small van because I want to be able to park in city centers mm. when I have a gig in Madrid. I, I you know this is it's all based on practical reasoning. Um, and and yeah, these 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 little gatherings. Um, maybe there are people that just still haven't found what they really want to do or maybe this is what they want to do and they really enjoy it yeah. but uh, but I, I reckon that many that I met um, and let's just stamp them this is funny oh you're a hippie well none of them are really hippies I think but mm. if, if, you know if they uh, many are addicted to sorry smoking and 
drinking. I guess I, I see myself falling into that when I get bored and I'm surrounded by it. Yes. And so I always think that that those that live in vans and they, they don't drink excessively and they don't smoke, or don't smoke weed because many smoke weed, then I'm like, ah, who are you? What's your story? <laughs> the ones that I meet, I'm very sorry, I don't want to insult anyone. The potheads that I meet, and there's lots of them, um, yeah, it's a vibe that I think is not not really my vibe without mm. judging it. But I do believe that that that's that's one way of escapism, you know. That's what I think. Yes, of, of, so, of course, of course. So yeah. um, you have that a lot in van life as well, as you know, you mm. know. Um, but there's this funny story. I was in. Um, with, I had a girlfriend, she was a surfer, with the, she was in her van, I was in my van and uh, if I wanted to spend time with her, I would, had to, I would have had to surf, otherwise I wouldn't see her because she was surfing a lot. And, um, you know, and, and, and through her I got more actually in contact with so-called van life because I was living in my van already, but I met no one that was living <laughs> in a van because I was going from place to place to busk to play, la, la, la. you live in a van, yeah, oh, do you know this in this place? No, no idea. <laughs> but you live in your van, like, yeah. But you should go there because there's more people like you, like me, you know, there you go. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, so anyway, then I was with her and I, I started to, wow, we're in a parking spot with more vans and oh, mm. somebody making a campfire, oh, this is nice, I really like that. And, and, all, and they were more conscious about not smoking or maybe one smoke, but like they were really way more in tune with celebrating life, being mm. in a van and, and doing their passion, living their passion, mm. you know? So I don't wanna, that is also really happening and I, I, really, I, I really admire uh, the people that do that because it's not easy. And um, so with her, but this is the funny thing. So she's in an old Mercedes with a Dutch number plate. We are in her van traveling in Portugal. Yeah? And then uh, suddenly the GNR, the Guardia Civil of the, from Portugal takes over. And my girlfriend at the time said, they will stop us mm. because they want to smoke weed. And, like, and I'm just like processing this. They will stop it because they want to smoke weed. Oh so, oh, so they assume we have weed. Because she doesn't smoke, she doesn't smoke weed, me neither. It's funny. But it looks like, yeah. But she, she's like a super hippie. Yeah. I was dressed like a bloody hippie wearing this old Mercedes van, you know. And indeed, a few hundred meters after they <coughs> overtook us, yeah, pull over, they stopped us, you know. Donde está la marihuana? You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> hostia. I'm looking at her, I always like start laughing like, you were right. And she's just like, yeah. You know, no, we don't have marijuana. You know, and then, and then I'm like, uh, they're like, where's the marijuana? No, we don't have marijuana. Where's the marijuana? Babe, do you have, no, 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 we don't. We don't smoke marijuana. I know we're Dutch, you know? I know it looks very dodgy. I know you don't <laughs> believe it. And we're like, oh fuck, of course they don't believe us. We are like the classical image, yeah. you know? And then um, he, he's like, you see this guy is like getting more frustrated. Like, uh, oh, where's the tobacco? Where's the tobacco? <laughs> and we're like, we don't smoke neither. And, and he was, okay, I say it one more time. I'll ask you one more time. If you answer no, and we find it, you're in deep shit. Mm. Where's the marijuana? And we'd be like, we don't. Okay, uh, he left. Yeah. Mm. So we, we took over. We, we we continue our trip, and she's like, yeah, that's what they do when they want to smoke themselves, you know. And I'm just like, that's one way. Maybe they didn't, but you don't know, right? But it would be funny if that would be the case. Yes. <laughs> now a few weeks later, I'm in Cadiz, busking on the streets. I meet these um, Argentinian musicians. And we play on this marketplace, some with the four of us, double bass, um, percussion, uh, me and a singer, trumpet. And we play Cuban music. And then uh, many people, they tip. And then suddenly we find, after the day busking, we, we find this little little piece of harsh in the, in the guitar case, yeah? Okay. And, and I'm just like, yeah, you have the harsh. No, 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 we, we split it, we split it. You know, we split everything. And they, they're just trying to, to this, this one gram of harsh is divided by four, you know, and it's like, yeah, what do I do with this? You know, like, mm. I, ah, I give it to my friend Ruben. I mean, he, he hard player, really great guy. He likes to smoke weed, probably. I'm like, I give this to Ruben, right? And of course, I forget to give this to Ruben. So I have this very little, little quarter of a gram of harsh somewhere in my van. Mm. Yeah. And my old, my, the van I had before this one, there was like this screen between the front and the back. Right, so I had to always exit my van and walk around to enter my van. Yeah? Mm. Okay, so I'm done in Cadiz, 
yeah and i'm on my way to salamanca long trip yeah it's like my google map set 400 kilometers straight no one on the road a typical blue sky sunny day you know la 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 la, la. listening to some uh, i don't know uh, america or horse with no name kind of music you know no. <laughs> okay so um i'm driving no one on the road i had a dodgy van looking very dodgy you know mm. like because i was in in stealth mode i didn't want people to know this was my house on the wheels in that time i wanted it to be yeah so i was like i never wash my van because it looks as if i have nothing in my van yeah. right so i'm there and then guardians of view traffico is overtaken i'm like oh they're definitely gonna stop me you know of course and yes pull over and i'm used to that because i have a lot of contact with police always busking or in traffic <laughs> and i'm used to it mm. so, I'm to it. so i'm really comfortable with the police you know, I'm, I'm always, my heart rate doesn't increase because I know they're human beings like you and me. And if you are thinking the right way and calm, you usually get away with many things, you know. And if not, you obviously deserved to pay the fine. Sure. So, you know, I'm always comfortable with that. So they pull over. You have to understand that when I lived in La Herradura, many people smoke weed on the streets. Police passes by and they never ever say anything. Okay. So, um, Police pulls me over. Okay, papeles, here are the papers. Okay, yeah, so um, what you just have to ask you, do you have any drugs? And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I do, actually. I do! <laughs> come with me! So I am like, come on! So I open the back door, like, finding this thing, like, yeah, wait, 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 I got it, you know, and I find this, yeah, this is quarter of a gram of ice. There you go! <laughs> and this guy looks at me like, and, and his colleague, there's two of them, his colleague is looking at him like, what do I do with this? You know, what, what, what? <laughs> and his colleagues are like, yeah, I, don't, I haven't seen nothing. Like, and in this moment, I'm realizing, like, oh, is this illegal? I think, yeah, this is illegal. This is, and and that they're okay. You're Dutch, you know, Dutch passport, and you see this guy like processing, like, okay, this guy is Dutch. He just gave us the marijuana without thinking it was illegal. How can he speak Spanish? So what's your story? What, I, I was in Spain, I play music, I'm on my road, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this was given to us when we were in Cadiz and you asked me for drugs. And then and, and you, your colleagues in Portugal wanted to smoke them. So <laughs> this is me. Like, I bet like, they, they laughed their ass. And I'm, I'm looking at this guy and I'm just like, oh, shit, but, but come on. I mean, like, like realizing, I like, go, oh, fuck, I, 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 this is actually illegal. So I tell this man, if, when I was in Spain, you know, everybody was smoking. Your colleagues were passing and they never said anything. I mean, is it really illegal in Spain? And it's like, yes. I'm like, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now what? Uh, and he's looking at his colleague like, what do we do with this man? You know, because in, in that time I could see in his eyes that he actually appreciated my openness. And we were talking like, he could see I was looking at him like a human being, not like mm. a bloody, you know? Yeah. So there is this thing between us because it was a really nice guy trying to do his job properly. But so he looked at his colleague like, can we, you know, what do we do with him? So his colleague was like, yeah, you know what? I didn't see nothing because by law they have to denounce me, right? Yeah, of course. So um, he goes to his car, gets the papers out, like he has to, my name, my, my po passport number, and then the details like, you know, why do I, you know, wh what's the reason for denouncing this man? You know, he has to fill in, yeah, for possession of drugs, right? But but he's like, can see him like, do I put this there for this quarter of a gram of mm. ice, you know? So I see him like in a doubt and I'm looking at him like, so I have to pay a fine or, yeah, this would be denuncia, dun dun denuncia. Right? Denuncia, yeah. But uh, you're Dutch, right? Yeah, yeah, I will probably not arrive. And I'm still not clicking in like, we're not arrived, but but you know no no don't and don't worry about it like I won't probably you know. then I'm like ah okay so in that moment I realized my naivety about some things you know <laughs> <laughs> like yeah th it is nice to be honest and open but um, sometimes uh, you can be more diplomatic yeah. in it. And, uh, yeah, you're more intelligent <laughs> about it. <laughs> yes, at least that. You know, so I didn't tell him about all the MDMA, ecstasy pills, and cocaine. <laughs> they had a, the the van full of like like fear and loathing in Las oh, Vegas. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. and like they have the the their car full of every drug there is, you know, and they 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 take their all. And, yeah, great Hunter S. Thompson uh, uh, book. Johnny Depp played the yeah. the lead role in in the movie. Nice. 
Oh yeah, police. I I remember I, I have I I've had a few contacts with police too, but everything fine. Not nothing nothing really bad happened. <clears throat> um except once I I had a few glasses of wine and then I in Barcelona and I went went um to my van on my bike and the, the police stopped me in the middle of the night at, at three o'clock in in the morning and they I had to to blow in the in the in the thing and I for this I had to pay a lot of money That's, alcohol control yeah. yeah that was because it doesn't matter if you're driving the the, the bicycle or if you you ride cannot the drive bicycle. the bicycle no you cannot drive cycle the bi- cycle yeah I was cycling like just cycling yeah, but it, it because you're in the traffic. normal traffic, it's it, oh. it's, just, it's the same as uh, going on a moto. I like Holland. I wouldn't have to do that in Holland. Yeah, I I was in Amsterdam once in on New Year's, and they all cycle to the to the discotheques. They all cycle to the clubs. I think you can cycle drunk in Holland. I don't think there's a law for that. I, at least they don't. They don't check you. Check you. But you can't phone while you cycle. That that's not the law. Oh. Yeah. Make makes sense. Can you do it with the with um, headphones? Yeah, let's do it with hands free, hands free cycling, hands free yeah. traffic. I think. Yeah. I drive. I ride my bike hands free too. You know, all the time. Yeah. They didn't find me for that. They find yeah, me hands for free. That. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But then there's there was this one time I was parked in a in a very just a parking lot in an industrial zone. Like it was not a good thing. But I was there because I had to pick up someone close to there. So I slept there, and in the morning I wanted to pick them up. And in the morning I was awake, but it was like nine nine a.m. and I was laying in my bed, checking my phone, you know. And all of a sudden, I I was laying with my head in the back of the van, like like on in the end of the van, of, on the back end with my head. And all of a sudden the door opens, Whoa. and there are these two policemen with their masks on and, and staring at me, and I'm like. Like I'm like wow, <laughs> like you know what, que susto, like yeah, what the uh, what the fuck, um, and then they they kind of closed the door and then I I opened the door again and I said so uh, sorry what, what what what's up what's going on, and uh, they say yeah um sorry to uh, you know to uh, to disturb, disturb you uh, we 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 would, we were we're just checking the ve- vehicle because it's a German um, uh, number. I played and and uh, this zone is kind of famous for robbed cars or cars getting robbed or whatever cars getting stolen and um, then they, they they left they didn't like but you didn't lock the door uh, you, you know I, I that, that that's the thing I didn't uh, my door wasn't locked usually I lock I lock my door but this t- this you night I, it, I yeah. forgot it or whatever yeah. and later I thought probably they weren't trying to open the door they were just checking is it closed like they were they wanted just to oh yeah let me check is it closed? and they i think they were surprised themselves that they must they, have been and yeah, they yeah, looked course. inside and you know yeah yeah because my van doesn't doesn't seem like a like a camper van it it, it it looks a bit like a work van or whatever so that that was a f- fun and and a bit um weird um weird situation yeah but it's 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 what you said usually um like police are are people <clears throat> and you can talk to them like and they 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 don't know me of course i i know i don't have drugs but they don't know so w- what are they supposed to do it's their job you know yeah, they you have gotta, to find yeah. out so you just have to see them as, as human beings and approach and with an open face when, exactly. when you know you're innocent approach them with your attention open yes face. they are so trained in reading your faces well the good ones yeah they know already by the first interaction if you are fooling them or not yeah because yeah, yeah. they have too many too much experience right mm. so i'm aware of that and yeah but i did meet also it's funny you say that during just before covid started i was busking here on in this, this weekend on saturday i was busking here on sunday they closed everything so i was driving to almeria to stay in my friend's house. I was parked in front of his house. And that morning at eight o'clock, something happened with, I think something happened with many police. Okay, in Spain, the policia, policia local. I don't know what happened, but <coughs> some of them felt like they were all like, like James Bond or something the moment this lockdown started because they, the ones that I met, the way they used their authority w- was like, was not nice that's how I experienced the first time my interaction with police what was bad was then because I was in my van and at 9 a.m. 
Hij pam 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 op mijn van. En hij opent de deur. En er was politie lokaal. Local police. Because in Spain you have the national, mm. local and the Guardia Civil. No? Um, so the police are local. They just literally grabbed me. Pulled me out the van. Hands to the wall. Spread your legs. You had to do this. They, you know. They made me instantly feel like I was a criminal. Yeah. Because I was parked in the street. And uh, probably the neighbor or somebody in the or na- neighborhood phoned the police. I think like there was this van parked in the street and I don't know, COVID fear or something. And, and the, the police was just treating me like a bloody criminal. But that was the only moment I uh, I got into a bad vibe with the police. Well, anyways, it's just uh, the stories that you that you experience when you're when you're traveling, right? When you're out there and. Um in life yeah there's many that I I, I I don't think it's a good idea if they share them if I share them in the podcast <laughs> <laughs> we can talk we can share write stories book. later too I, should write, I will write a book one day yeah and then uh, you know the uncensored version and the censored version oh yeah 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 definitely <laughs> I would love to read that man. how, how are you gonna write it in, in Dutch nah. or in English Well, well, I don't. I say I shoot, and I. I prob- How would you I probably, write it? Probably you, not in English. Probably. If you did it. Well, I have English? a friend. My best friend. She is English, and she is mm. actually far better. Sk- I'm. I'm dyslexic, so if I write things, especially not in my native language, mm. it's never gonna sound mm. correctly formed and everything as when an English person who is pretty good in writing yeah, will yeah, do it so I will involve my friend with this by writing and she already offered to do it oh yeah yes so it's just and she knows me damn well good and she knows a lot of the stories anyway so I will, we'll probably do it together but I do think I should do that uh, simply because uh, yeah, I mean you don't have it's to not, do it no, now no, no, no not now no but because there's a lot of time but that there it, it, it is it is kind of Yeah, different to to how many other people you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. Lives. It's just and then why not make a book of it? Because yeah. it's, it might be interesting for people to read it. Yeah, even even if if you don't make a lot of um a lot of uh, copies copies, you can just like it's it's very interesting, even if it's just for your children or just for your yeah. Uh, just to write it, uh, you know. Like the music. If you write a um, bloody album or a song, you produce it and then you you deliver it and mm. then it's gone. It's like yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Get, does it get listened? Yeah, it would be nice. But if not, you know, you yeah. you don't. I recently I, I I read a quote. I don't know from whom, sadly, but that guy said, um, "You ha- you should as a musician you should bring like all the music you have inside, bring it all out." It's kind of your duty. Good. <laughs> Thijs, um how do you spell your name? Spell your name <laughs> for me, please. T I J S. T I J S. And what what is your ad on the on the socials on on Instagram like the name on Instagram? Thijs Groen. T I J S G R O E N. With a no dash. No dash? No. Okay. So Thijs Thijs Groen. Groen. Yes. Okay. Okay, and like we said before, Tice is on the internet everywhere. I'm on the end. I'm digitalized. He's digitalized. Yes, I am. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can put on the the yeah, the and the metaverse. You you can <laughs> book me for for virtual shows. Oh yeah, virtual like peep podcasts. Shows, you know? <laughs> peep shows. I play naked. I just put my guitar in front of my cross, and yeah. Oh man, Tice, great talking to you. Yes. I really loved it. Yeah. And so uh, nice, man. So nice. <laughs> yes, and I hope um, we can repeat it with more experiences and, and more stories to share next time. Yeah, I can go into detail about um, your mankini you showed me yesterday. My mankini, <laughs> <laughs> is it that thing that Borat wears? <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, I should get one maybe. Yeah. I'm gonna get more views on TikTok. Yeah, you're definitely it. gonna make it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> You're hungry? <laughs> yes. That's great, man. We're gonna we're gonna eat <laughs> now. Nice. I'm hungry too, man. That's fuck. Yes. All right. Well, my fridge is underneath the table. This is the good thing, right? Everything is within reach, and you're. <laughs> <laughs> That's 